this video, I'm jumping back into WRC9, the official World Rally Championship game, and we're going to be talking about the car handling whilst driving the Safari Kenya Super Special Stage. Let's go. Welcome back to the Game of Muscle YouTube channel. Click that like button and subscribe if you enjoy simulator content. So here we go. Safari Rally Kenya Special Stage, 4.5 kilometers. It's basically uh, two laps, 31 meters elevation, and uh, pure defaults. I'm using the uh, Fanatec DD here, the podium with the D-shaped rim. You should probably have a rally rim on this, but I don't have one at the moment. And uh, yeah, we're just going to default it and talk about the handling. Uh, also, this is based on having driven some other stages. So compared to WRC 8, um, I think the handling in this, the, the biggest, the, be the best way to probably describe it is that I feel like the cars have a little bit more mass. They're a, they're a little bit more weighty. That's the impression I get from the handling of them. Uh, you can throw them into corners more, especially on the dirt, and hold the slides out longer. But the cars are also very grippy still, so you're not going to be uh, sliding around all over the place. Uh, you, you definitely have that kind of bitey feel, which I personally really like. As long as you can actually throw the cars out and uh, slide and control the slides and use the, use the throttle to hold it and a bit of counter steer. I like that combined with that general bitey grippiness that you probably in some ways expect from uh, super high tech, <laughs> top notch, top technology uh, rally, rally car tyres with all the other stuff that goes on with modern rally cars as well. Now, in terms of the actual physics, it's definitely on the simulator side of things, uh, you know, I really wouldn't describe this as an arcade game. If you go into this with a sort of arcade mentality of just flat out accelerate, flat out brake, you, you know, you will just oversteer and understeer and it won't be any use to you. You have to, you have to drive this as you would generally want to drive a, a real vehicle. Uh, even if you're playing it with a gamepad, I've actually tested this on an Xbox 360 controller, um, you, you'll want to be really gentle with your throttle and brake. You actually get some really nice rumble and effects on the controller to let you know if you're braking too hard or if you've got more more margin to brake harder. And you can also feel if you're pushing the car too much and understeer. Obviously, with the force feedback wheel, that's, I've just missed that corner. <laughs> Obviously, with the force feedback wheel, you can uh, feel much more detail. And I think the force feedback in this is uh, pretty decent, to be honest. Uh, relatively similar to uh, WRC8 but uh, a little bit more detailed. You've got, you've got more force feedback options in the menu system, um, in, uh, allowing you to adjust things from like the rumble and tactile feel settings, but also stuff like how aggressive the uh, self-aligning is and the, uh, the torque from the, uh, from the tires and the, all the other effects and everything from the suspension that produces the end result and force feedback. Um, basically, at the end of the day, I find the force feedback really immersive with this. Um, you can tell what the car's doing, you can feel the weight of the car wanting to move around and uh, it helps you dri to drive. I'm sure some people will prefer other force feedback with it, you know, other games with different force feedback. There may be other tires with better or worse force feedback. You know, it lets me know exactly what the car's doing. I don't feel like the force feedback's getting in the way. If I was to be really critical of the force feedback, I would say um, it feels to be a little loose spot in the centre of the force feedback. It's not an input dead zone, but it's where the tyres are totally, uh, you know, the car's totally straight and happy. There's a little bit of uh, not really force feedback, a force feedback dead zone. Probably not the right way of describing it, but like uh, an initial looseness to the force feedback before you actually start sliding or, or the weight of the vehicles on the tyres. Uh, I like it more when there's a, a complete immediate bite from the force feedback because it kind of gives you that feeling of the car, the, the G-force is hooking up straight away uh, that you would feel in a real, real vehicle. But it doesn't get in the way of the handling. Uh, as I said, crucially, the details are there to let you know what's going on and to drive from it. Um, but yeah, I, I really enjoy how you can just gently apply a bit of uh, brake to nose the car in and you really do feel how that causes it to bite and you also really feel especially on downhill uh, hilly tracks you really do feel how uh, squirrely the back of the car gets on braking zones depending on how hard you're pushing the brake pedal uh, which you can either come off the brake a bit or you can 
<laughs> be, be very careful with your steering and correct the rear. Uh, and you can, again, that all comes through the force feedback to allow you to know what to correct. Uh, it's, just, it's just really, really engaging. I think they've done a really good job. I'm not going to make any direct comparisons between other simulators at this point in time. This is obviously a, a press build of the game, so I don't know what will change, what will stay the same by the, uh, from, from now to the actual release of this game. I love driving wide on that bit of track there. <laughs> That's my hobby. Uh, but I, I think uh, as it is now, I'm, I'm really happy with the handling in this. It doesn't have that frustrating thing of feeling like it's the game's fault. Uh, I think that's the best thing with any driving game, regardless of if it's a realistic or, um, uh, you know, simulator arcade realistic, not realistic. I think the, the first thing that a driving game has to nail is that aspect of whether or not it feels like it's your fault when you, when you crash or you miss a corner or you make a mistake. It doesn't feel like it's the game's fault. And I would say that that is what this gets this gets that damn pat. <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm a happy shopper with the with the physics in this, and I think they've done a good job. So uh, there you go. That's my first impressions of the car handling in this early version of WRC9. Keep your eyes peeled on updates on the channel. We'll be covering this as it gets closer to release and launch. But until then, click that like button, possibly subscribe, and uh, maybe if you're feeling really kind, also click the bell. Till the next one, guys. Thanks for watching. Happy tea drinking. And goodbye.